So, hey guys, what you're about to watch is us reading an article that we actually um, had one of our staff writers interview some investors of uh, from KMPH Chem Farm who feel very strongly about this particular drug's potential, this particular drug uh, biotech company's potential. This is not financial advice. We do not um, recommend buying KPM, KMPH. We do not recommend not buying it either. We recommend you doing your own homework. And this may be helping you decision. discover. Make your own decision. Help you discover something. Help you learn something. Entertain you a little bit. Keep you informed, but not financial advice. Guru Nation, welcome back to a special emergency podcast edition. Uh, this is Dan Sfera. I got emergency. Chris Sauber. Emergency. We had to, like, we actually had this request we put up this video on KMPH, which is a stock, Chem Farm. Uh, we're going to get into the article. KMPH on the circle. Then I did another one on my channel, uh, which is Dan Sphere on YouTube. And the KMPH mm -hmm. army came out in full force. And most of them loved it. Some of them thought we were uh, morons. And uh, But I'll really? take it. Did you get that? Did yeah. you get that comment? You guys are morons. I got a comment that said this company should cure stupid because apparently there's a market for it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So that, I mean, those are the kind of comments I was getting. But most of them, I would say the vast majority were very positive. Like, hey, thank you for raising awareness around this company. That one I would actually laugh at. And say, That's I did hilarious. laugh. I that said, was, I replied yeah. and said, um, yeah, I kind of agree. And then I laughed. And then he messaged me later. So like if we actually, he was one of the people who introduced us to some people in the know, like some serious investors who know a lot about this company. Right. We said, look, we have a writer named Eileen Schneider, the writer. She's an amazing writer. Can she interview you for a written post? And they said, absolutely. So we got this written post and I'm going to share the screen so you guys can see uh, and read along with us. Chem Farm Inc. K M P H. Okay, builds on repurposing molecules. So it's about ADHD, and this is the next one. The one they have a catalyst date, a potential catalyst date for the stock, March second, twenty twenty one. It's K P four one five. The the FDA decision will be it's supposed to be March 2nd. It will be the first major improvement since the launch of Vivance in 2007, which is what's currently being used for ADHD. KP415 is for kids. Uh, they do have other stuff in their pipeline we will get to, but this is the most important one because this is going to be the next catalyst. Um, according to Bill Mitten, an Iowa-based investor, shout out to Bill, in 2003, the ADHD market was 2.3 billion. That market in 2024 is estimated to be 24 billion with a year over year increase. Vivance was discovered by Travis Mickle, my new LinkedIn connection. Shout out to Travis Mickle. I don't know him, but we just connected. And a team of young scientists at a company called New River. It was an amphetamine based stimulant with perceived lower abuse potential. Five Ants has been a blockbuster for Shire. Have you read this article, Chris? Or is this the first, like, are we doing this together? I have not. Yeah, I have not read this. Okay, good, good. So I get to uh, get your live reaction to you. I read it. I already read it. Five Ants has been a blockbuster for Shire and, in fact, has been its top return on investment cash cow since, it, since its inception. However, fast forward to today, Chem Farm, KMPH, with the same Travis Mickle now at the helm as CEO, along with the same team of scientists, anticipates that lightning will strike twice. Aline has a way with words. The team has discovered a methylphenidate-based stimulant with properties that will propel it to be the category leader in a very short period of time, according to Mitten. Chem Farm believes it has developed a superior drug to the team's original discovery of Vivance. The data for KP415 support the claim of a 30-minute onset of action, a smooth plasma profile, and up to 13-hour duration. 
anyone living in a household with a member or members afflicted with ADHD knows how much of a vast improvement a 30 minute onset uh, would be when compared to up to 90 minutes. That means okay. this medication would be working by the time children are getting dressed and ready to go instead of kicking in when they are dropped off at school. In addition, the 13 hour duration would be a lifesaver. It would allow the child to finish their dinner and homework without the need of having a booster medication later in the day. So obviously solve some mm -hmm. practical problems. It's not a me too yeah. drug. Okay. Right. Um, which is what the FDA is looking at. So what did you have to say, Chris? Um, so one, I was unaware that Eileen wrote this article. She's yeah, a great, good article. Writer. great writer, Schneider, the writer. Hell yeah. Uh, and then and secondly, um, so I think that, is this a comparison to Vyvanse? Um, or They're comparing the it to Vyvanse. Vyvanse is the market current market leader. But the, this is a pro drug. So it's used with SDX, and I don't know how to pronounce it. Seradex methyl. There you go. Thinidite. There you go. Which is a generic or SDX ADHD. For short. It's basically that's a generic ADHD treatment, and uh, KP four one five makes that like a new drug, like totally different drug. I mean, thirty minute onset makes it much more efficacious. Smooth plasma profile up to thirteen hour duration. Those attributes, along with less sleep disruption, a smooth efficacy curve, and, hum and a human abuse potential comparable to placebo, should make this certain first-in-class drug, Mitten explained. Also, being a methylphenidate, which is preferred as a first choice in adolescence, is an asset. Right. Uh, he added, we all know that having the product is key but you also have to have a team that can effectively ramp up the distribution in order to be a blockbuster. They're thinking this can be a blockbuster. More than a decade ago, Vyvanse was picked up by Shire. Shire had an ACE team led by Perry Sternberg that did a super job in commercialization. Chem so, Farm, yeah. So real, real quick, just that paragraph there. Now you said they think there's gonna be a blockbuster. Now, have you ever met a pharmaceutical rep or owner or you know ceo that would say otherwise uh this drug no, sucks we're no. just running the testing of course guys, i mean they're all blockbusters of, you got to take it with a grain of salt but it doesn't mean this not accurate what this guy is believes. of course uh, yeah many of them are accurate most right. are not though right most are not uh chem farm had in fact been working with the same team as shire, at shire in regard to kp415 that team knew the category inside and out. The team also had a decade-long working relationship with Dr. Mickle. Both Kemp Farm and the ACE team at Shire assumed that Shire would be taking on the new and improved KP415 to secede Vyvanse that would be coming off patent in 2023. However, Shire was unexpectedly taken over in a $62 billion buyout by Takeda Pharmaceutical. The members of the experienced CNS team that had worked with Vyvanse and Dr. Mickle in the past were all moved out of the company, being displaced by Takeda Transplants. That happens in big mergers and acquisitions all the time. As luck would have it, all five of this all-star CNS team coalesced at Corium Pharmaceutical, a subsidiary of Gurnet Point Capital, otherwise known as GCP, GC, or GPC. Sorry, GPC. Too much GCP on my mind. Okay. Yeah, we were G talking about that all day yesterday. Uh, all day. GPC is owned by Ernesto Bertarelli, a Swiss billionaire. Bertarelli comes from a family well known in the pharma world. In 96, he, su he succeeded his father as head of Serono. In 2007, the company was acquired by Merck to form Merck Serono. Bertarelli who has continued his focus on the healthcare industry has publicly stated that Corium slash GPC intends to be the next Shire of the world in the CNS category and is making every move to be just that. So let's go back to the stock. Look at this market cap for KMPH as of today, up 5%, by the way, uh, 193 million. Okay, let's take Neurocrine. It's one that got big, like Shire. I think Neurocrine's smaller. I'd say it's mid-size. Yeah, it's Neurocrine's mid -size. a 10. Neurocrine's bio uh, market cap, which, by the way, Shire's probably was bigger than this, by the way, because Neurocrine is not 
at currently at where Shire was with the commercialization of Vivance. So let's say 3x. Let's say Shire was 3x neurocrine right now. Okay, at its in its heyday. Um, neurocrine's at 10 billion, 10.6 billion. Okay. This KMPH, 193 million. All right. Now you're not going to see that, you know, just from one approval. They have to commercialize. They have to start selling it. They got to reinvest. But the value, the potential. This is just to show you the potential. Um, Bertarelli, who has continued his focus on healthcare, has publicly stated that Corium GPC intends to be the next shire of the world in CNS and is making every move to be just that. We'll see more potential from this company here, even beyond KP four one five. Corium, under the leadership of Perry Sternberg, now has the same commercialization team that was successful in taking Vivance to market. Many of the key people in Shire, CNS category, have recently been hired by Corium. Territory managers and detail people are quickly being hired across the country. Corium GPC seems to be going full steam ahead and filling out an extensive and experienced CNS department. After KP415, Chem Farm will have KP484, which will be much longer acting form of the same molecule with a once a day dosing intended for adults. In addition, KP922 will be an amphetamine pro drug in an IR and ER form that will give Chem Farm exposure on both sides of the stimulant aisle, methylphenidate and amphetamine for use in ADHD therapy. Moreover, ChemFarm has just received FDA approval to start trials on its IND uh, for KP879. This molecule is going to be developed in hopes of treating substance use disorder. Substance use disorder is a devastating epidemic in our country with meth and cocaine addiction. I mean, this is obvious for anyone living in San Francisco, Los Angeles. This is not the article, by the way. This is me. This is obvious to anybody living in San Francisco, LA, New York City, any large other cities. big cities. All right. There's a huge homeless <laughs> issue, and a lot of the homeless mm -hmm. issue, a lot of the increase has been because of substance abuse. Uh, KP879 would be the first and only agonist replacement therapy available to those suffering while withdrawing from these horrible drugs. Chem Farm should hear from the FDA by the end of February on the classification of priority review, fast track, and orphan designations for KP879, which is the substance use disorder. This category could dwarf even the ADHD segment of the business, being an ultra dose of the same molecule on KP415. Many of the studies already done will have crossover ability, streamlining the timeline. Even says here, ultra dose of the same molecule in KP415. KP879 methyl, methylphenidate preclinical IMD submission. So yeah, you know, these are the parent drugs. So same, drug. same one, same yeah. one, methylphenidate. Financially, Chem Farm has never been in a better position. Over the last few months, the company has gone through a reverse split uplisted from the penny stock market over the counter market to the NASDAQ and paid off all debt. After the anticipated approval, Kemp, see they're anticipating it, but it's not really reflected in the stock price. People are skeptical as they should be. Um, it's had a run up already from January uh, $6 to it hit a high of like almost 12 and now it's trading at 1025. So, that's like 70% still. That's that's a significant run up. Right. But all, most biotechs in that period with any kind of uh, potential have had a similar run up. So it's sure. not like this had a crazy run up. After the anticipated approval, Chem Farm will have very little debt. We'll have a little over $100 million in the bank with zero debt. The company also has a mm -hmm. very lucrative partnership deal with Corium. Chem Farm will receive in total... 493 million in milestone payments related to KP415 and KP484 and royalties on US net sales of up to 25%. So it's not uncommon though, Chris, for um, these small cap biotechs to partner with larger groups like Horium. And I mean, Neurocrine actually did this mm -hmm. for their drugs and this is a common strategy. So that billion dollar market cap or whatever we saw from neurocrine it could still be uh like from now billion. 
for now, maybe the ceiling, but at some point, if they keep doing all this, maybe that's just like a new floor for them, for KMPH. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is just the first milestone, uh, 493 million related to KP415 and 484 as soon as it's approved, uh, and royalties in the US sales of up to 25%, and royalties on X US net sales up to 9%. Mitten believes that Chem Farm has positioned itself to be a prime buyout candidate or a strong, successful go it alone entity. The choice is now entirely in Chem Farm's hands. Mitten added that Chem Farm's pride and joy is its ability to develop new drugs on the back of others' work and money. The company does this by utilizing the 505B2 pathway. It takes existing drugs already on the market. And this is what you were saying, Chris, and investigates how to make significant improvements. Those improvements could range from onset or or duration, ability to be abused, or a host of other parameters. This technique of improving can be used across the entire spectrum of therapeutics. So the possibilities are endless. It actually has been called a license to steal by some. It kind of is, in my opinion, because... It's a loophole. You can take a drug... Yeah, you can take a drug that's already existing and it may, may still be under patent even, I think. And if yeah. you improve it, and the company you can, can take then, it. And they can even go, the company can piggyback on the data and dollars that have been invested by others to develop a brand new molecule. So they can like even hijack the data and say, look, you know, we don't need to go mm-hmm. through all that. Uh, develop a brand new molecule that will get full patent protection. Mitten concluded, it is akin to the golden goose that will just keep laying golden egg after golden egg. We gotta love this guy, Bill Mitten. He's v- very passionate about this. So Dr. Mickle has stated, shout out to my new LinkedIn connection, Dr. Mickle. Hit me up, hit me up, man. Let's let's like be uh, Instagram pals. Dr. Mickle has stated that given sufficient funds, he doesn't have enough life left to develop all of the possibilities. So that's the answer to your question earlier. This is perhaps the most valuable asset that Chem Farm possesses. So what do you think about all this going on? This is not a recommendation to buy or sell. Chris and I are speculating in um, the stock a little, but it's just so, been recently. Um, so, so it's 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 really amazing how these companies can go from from uh, analogy from Skid Road to to the penthouse, right? Like no crime. <laughs> From over-the-counter pink sheets to uh, living, yeah, living it up. Like Nor- Nor- like the Jeffersons. We've, exactly. We've done a lot of work with Neurocrine. So um, if you recall, they went bankrupt at one point, right? They, oh, yeah. I don't think they were listed on the stock market or anything. They were pretty much out of business, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now their market cap's $10.6 billion. So these scientists are the medical heroes, man, when it comes to these companies. Like yeah, a team, a absolutely. good scientist and a team can make or break many a biotech. You know, Vertex, there's been a book written on this. It's called Billion Dollar Molecule. Vertex, it, it's all about Vertex Pharmaceuticals. Here's the negative coming out of me. If this doesn't get approved, then the, the adult one is likely to not get approved also. So they yep. don't have yep. a substance abuse one, which is like at least a year or two away. And so this mm-hmm. might go back in the two dollar, one dollar range. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, maybe, but the upside: people want price targets on these videos. I would say it depends on the run up between now and March second. If it gets from ten to twenty before the approval date, then after approval, I would expect this thirty to forty, maybe a little more. No, I'm not, I wouldn't be that optimistic, but certainly it could. depends on the run up between now and March second. If certainly. it stays at this range, ten fifty, I think with approval we'll see twenties. If it gets up agree. to twenty with approval, we might see thirties. So you're thinking it could possibly double once it's approved, whatever it's at at that time, March first, whatever it's at, it gets approved March second, probably doubles. Yeah, initially, yeah, and then it will have a fair. more of a run up in anticipation of the next one because if it gets approved mm-hmm. the adult one is likely to get approved so the run up's not going to stop like most biotechs when they have an approval like this there's a bunch of profit takers but you have more in the pipeline that is the chances now of those getting approved if this gets approved increases mm-hmm. 
So I don't think there's going to be as many profit takers as you see in normal biotechs. I would agree. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. Thank you, Eileen Schneider, the writer, for a very good article.